Welcome to TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about the secret to learning and leading. You know the deal. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. Education is everything and everything is education. I can sum up my fundamental convictions of life with those two statements right there and leave it at that. Education is everything and everything is education. Let's go line by line. We only got two. Education is everything. This is one of those statements that seems to be wrong on the surface. I mean, nothing can be everything, right? Saying education is everything is a little bit like saying money is everything. That's got to be wrong, right? Because we need a balanced life consisting of many different factors and forces in order to get everything. But I'm going to double down and say education is everything. Anything and everything that is important to you in life traces back to education. Education is the foundation for liberty and all else that we love. But this seems to be a flawed statement. Because the way in which we have been conditioned to think about education leaves a whole lot of valuable stuff out. And so when I talk a lot about education as everything, some people might hear that as you should be sitting around reading books all the time. But participating in the creative process, trying to create things, trying to make art, not even knowing what you're doing and making a bunch of mistakes, that's education. Being in a relationship, that's an education. Applying for a job, working at a job, that's an education. Following a dream, that's an education. Listening to an audiobook or a podcast or trying to write down your thoughts. Life itself is a form of education so long as it is done deliberately, intentionally, consciously with the desire to grow. That is what education is all about. It's not just something that happens inside of schools. So what that means is if something is important to you, you want to get better at your relationships, you want to get better at mental health, you want to figure out how to take greater control of your finances, you want to stop letting the things that go on in the world get you down, you want to overcome your fears, you want to see how you can be more effective at achieving your dreams, the solution lies in the direction of taking charge of your own educational process. Education is the ultimate form of self-help. There's something which, if you only knew, would cause the things that are just like killing you right now to be much more easy to cope with or much more easy to resolve. There is a higher perspective from which all of our problems can be viewed that causes those problems to become a punchline. Education is the pursuit of such higher perspectives. And no, my concept of education isn't mystical. I don't believe that education can magically make your problems disappear. But education is the thing that can help you see that you don't always need to make your problems disappear in order to live a life that is meaningful and, dare I say it, magical. Education is everything. But what about everything is education? Well, there's an interesting thing that you observe when you walk into a bookstore or a library. You see all these different sections, right? You might see a section on history, a section on anthropology, a section on chemistry, a section on mathematics. You have a fiction section with all of the different genres of fiction. And then somewhere you'll see a section called self-help. And the implication is those are the books that you read if you want to become a better person. What about all that other stuff? Well, it's possible that economics or philosophy might conceivably make you a better person accidentally. But that's mostly for school. That's mostly for a job. That's mostly for, you know, those nerds who have special interest in geeky things. But nobody's going to the IT section, right? If they want to improve their lives, they're going to go to the self-help section. But here's the reality, folks. Everything is education and every subject, every topic can help make you a better person. The key to becoming a better person isn't about reading self-help books. It's about improving your understanding of the universe and your place in it. And yes, self-help books, which I love, I got a whole shelf dedicated to them can help you with that, but so can history, so can philosophy, so can anthropology, so can economics, and you are limiting yourself beyond belief. 
if your path to becoming a better person is limited to only consuming books that are found in the self-help section. I'm not a hater on self-help. I love all the cheesy self-help stuff. But if you want to expand your toolbox and really increase your options in life, go beyond the self-help section and embrace it all. Because education is about so much more than the subjects that we study in school. And the subjects that we study in school have more to offer us than the things that we are taught in school. Education is a lifelong process. It is your decision to participate in your personal growth and anything that you learn is part of education. Embrace it. If there's an area of your life where you're struggling or you're confused, knowledge is the answer. You've heard the words, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yeah, but TK, reading a bunch of books um, isn't going to do it. You got to apply the knowledge. And that is why I don't make the mistake. And I encourage you not to make the mistake. That's why I don't make the mistake of equating knowledge with sitting down and reading books. There is such a thing as embodied cognition, taking the theory, taking the ideas, taking the concepts and practicing them, playing with them, putting them out there into the world. That too is a form of knowledge and education. Don't underestimate it. It's everything. Let's go to tweet number two. It's not enough to preach or teach. You must be willing to become a student of the people you wish to reach. More important, or I'll say equally important, equally important as the things you want to share with others is the context that defines other people's lives. If you want to be an educator, a teacher, an influencer, a salesperson, or just a decent human being who shares useful resources with other people, you cannot rely on your positional authority or your philosophical arguments. You have to actually study people and pay attention to them because everybody has a unique set of concerns, a unique set of creative challenges, a unique background experience, a unique set of priorities. And when you take the time to understand those things, you receive instructions from the, from those people on how you can get them to receive whatever it is you're sharing with them. One of my favorite quotes, it comes from John Maxwell, where he said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. On the surface, that may sound like some cheesy thing of like, well, you got to listen to people and go, oh, I'm so sorry, in order for them to listen to you. No, no, that's not what it's about. It's about understanding that before someone else is your student, You've got to become their student. You've got to figure out, hey, what is it that they care about? And how can I sell these ideas in light of that? So many times we just jump into the excitement that we feel about helping other people and, and sharing with them information that we think can change their lives. And then when those people question the relevance of the information or when those people challenge the curriculum, we get defensive about it. We get upset and we just say, well, this is just what you have to do. We've always studied algebra. We've always studied history. We've always done it this way and you just need to accept it. But hey, look, either the information we're sharing is useful or it's not. If it's not useful, then we should welcome a challenge that helps us to stop wasting our time by sharing useless things. But if what we're sharing really is useful and it really does make a positive difference in other people's lives, then we should be more than willing to think critically and creatively about how to present that information in a way that that person can use to solve their particular problems. So if you love ideas and you love helping people, then let those people help you know how to help them. Ask questions. Don't lead with the knowledge that you have to share. Lead with a genuine sense of curiosity about what they care about and what they struggle with. That's how you lead. Leading is not something that you're entitled to do. It's a reward. It's an opportunity that people give to you as a result of you taking the time to care about them enough to understand their particular context. All right, y'all. Those are TK's two cents on learning and leading. Have an awesome week. If you enjoyed this episode, don't hesitate to click the like button, click the subscribe button, give us a retweet or a share on social media and share with a family member or a friend that you think might benefit from hearing these thoughts. All right, y'all, I'll see you next week. Peace out.